Hello, what's up for your feminine? I am really excited to talk tonight about the garden of love. And I absolutely adore this metaphor. I use it all the time with my clients because if we think about our love life, it is really like a garden. If we think about approaching our love life like a garden, we're gonna have so much better results and so much more fun in the process than if we approach it like a job. So a lot of people will say, dating is just a numbers game or you've gotta go on a million dates or make sure that you're on all the apps and all of these things. But the truth is dating isn't a numbers game because I'm sure you have a friend that you know who like found her partner when she was 22 and they've been married forever and living happily ever after, right? And you probably know someone, maybe even like yourself, who's gone on a million dates and just can't seem to find their partner. So it's about energy and it's about cultivating the right mindset, the right heart set and the right skill set and not about going on a million dates. You know, it doesn't have to be like an interview or something that feels like it takes forever or that gets super exhausting. But we do have to learn how to tend our own garden. So do you ever struggle with getting to the next step in relationship? Maybe going from message to date, or from date to relationship, or from relationship to even more significance. You know, a lot of women struggle with that. It's like we're, we're doing all these activities, but we're not actually getting the thing that we want, which is love, right? Like, who cares that much about dating? Most of us just wanna be in a great, loving, committed partnership, or we wanna have an epic adventure. But we, you know, we get lost along the way sometimes because we just don't know how to dav navigate modern dating. And it's very different than it was 20, 30 years ago. Heck, even five years ago, there's way more apps and there's way more, um, um, you know, things that are different. So when I think about this metaphor of planting the seeds in the garden, it also has to do with the weeds, right? We all have these weeds in our mind, these, <laughs> these things that kind of overtake us. So if you've ever, you know, wondered, well, when is he or she going to message me back? Or, you know, I'm just not lovable because of this, or I feel fat today, or you know, my hair didn't look that great, or I'm never gonna find someone, or the men in this town suck. Like, all of those things are examples of weeds that are gonna crowd out the ability for love. Because if we're feeling really negative about ourselves, or about our city, or about potential partners, or about the dating apps, then it can crowd out the love that wants to grow, you know, and those weeds can really take over. So we have to be a good gardener. We have to plant seeds of love, and then we also have to weed our garden with intention. We have to nurture this process. And you you know, you just need one, right? Like one great relationship. You don't necessarily need, you know, 25, but not every seed is gonna blossom, so to speak. You know, not every seed is gonna flourish, not because it's your fault, not because it's the other person's fault. It's just maybe not meant to be, or maybe it's just not the right timing. But you absolutely can have a bountiful harvest and have the thing that you're looking for, you know, the prize winning, winning pumpkin or whatever you want to call it. Um, I grew up in the Midwest, so my mind immediately goes to like 4-H prizes for, you know, really large, beautiful vegetables or watermelons or something like that. When I was five, I was in uh, the store and I was telling my dad, well, I could eat a whole watermelon. And he was like, yeah, I don't think so. But of course, as a five-year-old, I thought I could. So he challenged me to that and brought home a watermelon and yeah, I didn't even eat half of it and I got <laughs> totally sick. That's, just, that's a different story for another time. Um, but the, the truth of it is that when we approach our love life as if we're tending our garden and nurturing the process, we're gonna have more fun, we're gonna have better results, and we're gonna have a lot more patience and devotion in our heart. So we talk a lot about commitment, but the parallel to commitment is devotion. Like what are you wildly devoted to? And things that you could be wildly devoted to are being a woman of love and expressing your, your life through love to getting into a great relationship. You could be devoted to your children. You could be devoted to your work. It's it's the thing that goes beyond just the logic, right? Of I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. And we can get trapped in the logic of dating because so much of dating nowadays is, is about the apps and all of those things. But those are just delivery mechanisms. Those are just channels. But the truth is that it's up to you as the gardener to really cultivate the right soil, you know, the right mindset, the right heart set, the right nutrition for yourself, not real nutrition, but like heart-based nutrition. You know, what are you feeding yourself? Are you encouraging yourself? Do you have good self-talk? Um, or are you forgetting to plant any seeds, right? Like a lot of times as women, we think, well, he should just show up on my doorstep or, you know, maybe if I go to this party, I'll meet my person. But we still have to plant the seeds of love. We still have to wink or smile or make eye contact or swipe, you know, and say hi to someone. Studies have shown that women who message and, and proactively message and mess of, mess, ugh, message first have greater success in love online than the women who don't. So as much as I want us to feel like, 
oh yeah, my guy's just gonna find me. The truth is that's not actually how it works. We have to be planting seeds. And again, you don't need five million seeds. You don't need to go on a million dates, but you need to be planting the seeds and then nurturing them with care. And so I'm, I'm curious, you know, have you been planting seeds? Have you been putting yourself in locations and places and situations where you could meet someone that you'd be interested in? Have you kept your heart open? Have you kept your mindset in a good place? And have you actively flirted? A lot of us have forgotten the art of flirting. You know, back in the day, people would be in the train station and they would drop their hanky and then the guy would get the clue like, oh, you know, I'm gonna go pick up her hanky and talk to her. It was just standard that there would be some societal norms around how to flirt. Nowadays, everyone's focused on their phone that if you see someone making eye contact with you, sometimes you're like, what's going on? And they're like, oh yeah, they're just smiling. So it's like our social norms have gotten really, really mixed up. But eye contact is the best way to communicate interest. If you can sustain eye contact, it's a good way to plant a seed. You know, does that person come up and talk to you? Maybe they will, maybe they won't. But I can guarantee that if you're not planting seeds, you're not going to have what you want in love. So ways that you can plant seeds are, like I said, going to places and being in situations where you're going to meet someone who has similar interests or values. Um, eye contact, flirting, talking, being open, having open body posture, doing online dating if that's something that you want to do, but doing it in a way that's effective. And that's something I really work with my clients on is how to online date in a way that really gets you what you want and attracts a high quality guy and has the right profile and all of those things. So plant the seeds and then nourish the seeds, nurture the seeds give them the right conditions to thrive. So if you do make eye contact, sometimes it's not enough just to make a second of eye contact at someone at a meetup and then look away. Like you might actually have to make eye contact again, or you might have to smile, or you might have to wave, or you might have to, heaven forbid, go up and talk to them. Or, you know, if a friend of yours has mentioned a guy that she thinks you'd be good with, and then she just forgets about it, you might have to follow up and say, oh, remember you were telling me about Tim? Like, I'd love to hear more about him. You know, are we, are you going to have a party sometime soon? Or how can I get to know him more? So we have to be able to follow up. Follow up is just nurturing our seeds. And of course, like I talked about, we need the right soil, the right nutrients, the right conditions, and we need to rip out those limiting beliefs that are keeping us from love because everyone is deserving of love. It's just that things have gotten more complicated and most of us never really learned how to date effectively. We saw relationships in our parents that we didn't want to emulate or that we did want to emulate, but the pathway to get there feels so much different because people are settling down much later. People are on second, third, fourth, you know, marriages and relationships. And so it's just a different ball game. But the good news is there's so many more options and people can have deeper relationships. So in the past, it felt like we had to settle for just kind of 1950s-esque relationships where the woman is more submissive and the man is the one who's doing all the things out in the world. And there was a lot of verbal abuse and mental abuse and physical abuse and all those things. And none of us want that, obviously. You know, we want to have a really spiritually connected relationship, an emotionally fulfilling relationship and a passionate relationship. So we can create a way better relationship, but it just takes a little more work. It takes a little more tending of our garden. And I always tell my clients, like, make sure you're tending your garden. Because once you get into dating someone seriously or once you get into a relationship, these same principles apply. You can't all of a sudden just... Pretend that you don't need to do anything for your self-care or staying in your feminine energy or setting healthy boundaries or speaking your truth. Like the same things you do to get a great date are the same things you do to keep a great relationship and to keep it going. It's just that a lot of times we don't know what those things are. And again, that's what I share with my clients on my program. We have all sorts of tools and resources on the dating rules of the road, which I call the dating guide map. It walks you through everything from first glance to walking down the aisle, you know, to tools to keep you connected to your heart and your vulnerability, tools to help you weed out your mindset and, and really cultivate the right garden. Um, so yeah, so my, my offering to you is imagine. Imagine what it would be like if you looked at your love life the way that you would at a beautiful garden. Like, wow. It's diverse, it's interesting, it's beautiful, it smells good, it lights me up, you know. It's something that I'm devoted to, like I want to spend time on it versus, oh, I guess I just need to go on an app again or, oh, I have a first date. Like, imagine if you didn't have that attitude. Instead, you had an attitude like a very proud, loving, grounded, you know, master gardener that you are and that you that you can be. So imagine what that would be like to approach your love life in the same way and to feel that same level of satisfaction and nourishment. And that's what I want for you and that's what I want for everyone. So don't try to do this at home, of course, because sometimes we don't see our own blind spots in our mind or in our heart. We can't tell the ways that we've been getting in our own way when it comes to relationships. So if you want some expert guidance and you just want some insight on what's been keeping you from love, what are some of those weeds in terms of your mindset, 
or maybe you haven't been planting enough seeds, you know, we're going to give you some clarity and some advice on that if you sign up for a free Breakthrough to Love session. So those are your 45-minute calls with me or my team. We go really deep into what's going on and, and what's been happening or what hasn't been happening. And we lay out the next steps if it makes sense. And if it doesn't make sense, that's okay too. You know, maybe it's just not the right fit. But either way, you'll get a lot of value and the planet will get more love, which is why we're here, right? So you can go to violetlang.com forward slash talk and that's where you can book that free Breakthrough to Love session. If you've already had one, we just do one per person, but you can continue to participate in the Facebook group and get a lot of access to these free videos and, and all of those things. Um, so the, I'll just leave you with a quote and I can't remember who said it, so I'll try to find that and put it in the comments, but it says, don't dig up, see, don't dig up in doubt the seeds you planted in faith, right? So we, we plant these seeds in faith. We, we go to a first date, we get ready. We, you know, go to the online profile. We, do these things and we dig them up in doubt. So don't dig up in doubt the seeds that you planted in faith. Like keep the faith for your love life and become that master gardener who nurtures and creates the right conditions and rips out the weeds so that it doesn't become just some overgrown thing or, or something that's totally barren. So I hope you have a beautiful rest of your night and I will see you all on our Facebook Live next week or on one of our breakthrough calls soon. Mwah. <laughs>